Hey YouTube, I am on my way to the garden. I need to plant my second succession of potatoes and it was actually just by fault. Um, I stored, I planted potatoes last year and had my parents store some in their garage because it was like the perfect environment to, uh, to store potatoes over the winter. And we thought that we got them all and then my dad showed up yesterday with a box full of sprouted potatoes. The second se succession of potatoes actually works out because for one, more potatoes. For two, it extends the harvest period so that you're not digging a 90 foot row of potatoes all at one time. You can split it up. Um, so that's what I'm doing. It is the end of May now. It's like May 25th, I think, when I'm shooting this. I have been non-stop planting for what feels like forever, and I'm still not done. Um, this is Hunter's Garden Entertainment, although it's been chilly the past few days, so we need to drain it and put new water. But I highly recommend, if you have a toddler, get a blow-up pool, because your garden time will be much more peaceful. Um, I feel like I have been non-stop planting. I got 190 some tomatoes in the ground. Um, I'm about to put 100 and some peppers. I think there's a, I'll count, I'll give you a count later. Um, all, like thousands of flower starts. Um, I did seed behind me. So we got some arches up. One, two, three. We got six arches up so far. I think there's 11 in total, which is so exciting. Um, but I'll tell you what, in case you want to know what I put on my arches. Um, this row is noodle beans. You got to grow noodle beans because not even that they're that great, which they taste fine, but they don't taste like a regular um, green bean. If you plant it, don't ex it's like an Asian bean. Like it's got a little bit of different taste. Like it would be really good stir fried. But if you were going to cook it like a green bean, which I do, I canned a lot of them the year before last and we're just now finishing them. Um, but I mix them with the green beans when I cook them so that it's not all noodle beans. But anyway, they look majestic. They're like a foot plus long hanging down on the trellis and they look pretty. Um, this one, I've got some dry beans that I got in a swap. Uh, the Good Mother Stallard beans? Stallard? I can't remember. I think that's what it's called. Um, that I'm going to save the seed for. I only had probably 10 seeds, so it'll grow and I will let them dry and save the seed. Um, this side of the trellis, I planted rattlesnake whole beans. Um, trellis number three. I already forget what I planted and I planted them yesterday. Oh, Scarlet Runner beans. So one side is Scarlet Runner beans and the other side is Sunset Runner beans. I know that they like cooler weather so we'll see how they fare but I've had the seeds for a couple years now so I just really needed to plant them. If they don't uh, produce, I'll rip them out and plant something else there. It's fine. Um, trellis number four. I think that's the start of the cucumbers. Yep. Okay, so on this side, I've got Wisconsin SMR, I think. It's like a little pickling cucumber. I want to stay on top of picking cucumbers for pickles. We love pickles, and I want to make like the little crunchy ones. Those are my favorite. Anyway, so I've got two plants on this side. For cucumbers, I plant two plants per side, so one on the left, and one on the right so that they don't crowd each other out and they get plenty of sun. Um, this side, I've got, oh, it was, um, it's called a salt and pepper. It's kind of like the silver slicer, but smaller, like a pickling one, which you can pickle silver slicer, but these stay smaller. Um, I got them from Johnny's, like they were discounted and it like a giant pack. Like I have like 250 seeds. I won't be needing to buy those for a while. So hopefully they're good because I got a lot. Um, arch number five. We've got on one side, we've got two plants of the Armenian white. And then the other side I planted with the Armenian 
striped, like the classic one. Um, I actually really like this cucumber. It's actually a melon that tastes like a cucumber. It's not a true cucumber, uh, but they get gigantic, like gargantuan sized. I just, if you can't tell, I like the novelty of things. So it's fun to grow things that you can't find. Like I would never go in a grocery store and see this, like three foot long cucumber. But the thing with these is that they taste just like a cucumber but they stay crunchier than your regular cucumber, especially when you can it. If you pick it like the size that you would a cucumber, it's gonna be probably, it's gonna be longer than your average, but like width wise, all the way around, they stay super crunchy and make really good pickles. Plus, can you imagine like a, just a trellis with these long dangly cucumbers? I can almost see it. I also feel like I'm behind for the year, like it's the end of May and I'm just now planting cucumbers, but this year has truly been crazy. I've had to buckle down in like the last week because I've been like planting flower starts feverishly. I have told myself you need to chill and get your seeds planted so that they can come up and start going. Trellis number six is the coveted silver slicer. So if you can't tell, I'm gonna grow all my cucumbers on the trellises this year because if you've never grown them before or if you have, you know how prickly they are. I'm so sick of crawling through the cucumber patch and it stabs you in the arms and the legs. So when you're, uh, they're just, the vines grow these sharp prickles and I just don't wanna deal with it. Plus, you can see them better when they're hanging on the trellis. Um, also, side note, this would cost a lot of money if I had to buy it. All these trellises, plus the tomato walls. We actually had all this fencing already on our property, so we were just feverishly, that, word of the day, feverishly. We would have been tearing out fences left and right uh, so that I can reuse them in places that we don't need them and I've been putting them and that's the end of the trellises that we have up so far but we do have the spots prepared to put the trellises so I went ahead and planted them I think that's the last of my yeah okay so trellis number seven is gonna be the kakuzi it's technically a gourd, but you can eat it like a squash when it's young before the skin gets hard, just like a summer squash. Um, it gets really long and pretty. <laughs> and also, I feel like you could dry them like a gourd. Like if I wanted to leave one and paint it, see what happens. Trellis number eight is loofah, which I might be too late, but as long as the loofah gourds are mature by your first frost. So I have all the way up until October to grow these. Even if they're not all the way dried out and brown, you can take them inside and I've seen videos of people drying them in the oven and then peeling the skin off and they work just fine. As like sponges, that's what I plan on using these for. Trellis number nine, yeah, nine is the start of my melons I think yes the coveted Kajari melon it's like a pretty personal size melon um, like for one or two people it's like just a really sweet it reminds me of a cantaloupe and that's like my favorite kind of melon um, so I'm growing that on the trellis I'm also growing lots more melons but like in my pumpkin patch and potato patch or potato my pumpkin patch my watermelon and then I'll throw a few more melons that I didn't have room for in with them okay trellis number 10 is I don't know how to say this <laughs> hey Ogan hi I don't know how to say it um, it's got an apostrophe in the middle of it so it's confusing but it's supposed to be a sweet I think the flesh is green if I remember right I don't know I've never had it before I got it from Baker Creek and it sounded good and then the final trellis number 11 is a cantaloupe called Edist Edisto <laughs> see gonna butcher that too Edisto 47 
It's supposed to be a smaller melon. So you can see that the smaller melons I'm gonna grow on the trellis and the larger ones I'm gonna grow in the ground, which I also get, have to get the plastic down today so that I can plant those and get them going. Um, we're supposed to get rain for the next two days and the rain today was supposed to rain all day and it's actually clear. So I am trying to work double time and get all the seeds in the ground. If you can see behind me, look how cute. My husband built me this cute gazebo. Doesn't it look like a gnome could live in there or something? Like it looks like a mushroom, I think. I think I need to paint it cutesy or I'll never get around to it, so it's fine. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh, this was the top of the corn crib. My original gazebo was gonna be the cage of the corn, like a corn crib, but we couldn't move it without collapsing it and we might have broke it, but we salvaged the top on it and it's still a gazebo. Uh, we're going to like landscape it. I'm gonna make it pretty around it and put some rocks or mulch or something in there with like a little fire pit. It's gonna be cute. We just, not right this second. <laughs> okay, the final stop on my garden tour before I plant these potatoes. Um, I did get all my dahlias in. I got about 180 dahlia tubers. I have 25 more coming that I forgot I ordered. Don't tell my husband that, but he watches my video. Sorry. Anyway, um, I got 180 going and there's, oh my God, a wasp was just like floating on the breeze right beside me. Um, and they're starting to pop up, so that's exciting. And then behind me, last week my dad um, plowed my big patch I planted a crap ton of sweet corn. I can't remember the variety, but I got the seed just from like Rule King and like the big package. I think it was from Burpee, but it was like, like a letter size package of sweet corn. So that's gonna be fun to put away. <laughs> I'm gonna have to enlist my children in the corn shucking because we've got hundreds of years of corn coming. I did get that seeded, and then in front of that, I'm gonna put my popcorn. Um, my family loves popcorn, especially my nine-year-old. She could probably live on popcorn. She eats it almost every day. And in the middle is going to be the pumpkin patch. I'm kind of panicking, you guys, because I have all this garden, okay? You see all of this? And I'm running out of space. But it feels like, at the same time, I haven't planted that much. Like, that's never enough. So, we'll see. Um, I'm gonna plant my pumpkins and my watermelon, and then at the front is my sunflower patch. And I walked out here this morning and there were birds, and I just seeded the corn yesterday and the sunflowers a few days ago, and they still haven't come up, so I'm really hoping. This is the second time I've seeded these sunflowers, and they're expensive, like they're for my bouquets. They're not expensive, but in the seed world, they're expensive because they are um, pro cuts, and the things keep eating them. But I really don't wanna, I know that people start sunflowers and plug trays and transplant, but to be honest with you, I'm so sick of transplanting. I just don't want to transplant a hundred Anyway, I guess transplanting it is better than constantly planting it and things eating it though But I'm really over I'm over that I'm ready for the phase of Weeding and watching things grow and watering and then picking that's the fun the fun part And I feel sprinkles and it's not supposed to be raining. I need to plant potatoes. I did plant in the rain the other day, but you can't film it. I'm back out at the garden, although it stopped raining. I had to go inside because it did a little bit more than sprinkle and I had to run to the house. But I'm back at the garden, gonna plant the potatoes. Now it's fairly windy, so um, I don't know how much of this voice recording I can use, um, but I wanted to say that the way that I'm planting potatoes has been working out so far. I mean, normally you would plant a potato like six-ish inches deep, um, but I planted these like fairly shallow, like really right under the surface. Um, 
And then I stacked like a thick layer of straw over top and it seems to be working out great. Uh, it's about time to do another layer of mulch because look how tall the plants are getting now. Um, this is like a foot-ish, 15, 18 inches tall now. So it could use another layer, but I was trying to let um, the later ones that sprouted a little later come up first before I smothered them with more mulch. So I'm gonna let probably another week or so and then I'll add more mulch, but that's how I'm gonna plant these down here is that I'm just gonna barely put them under the soil and then stack it with mulch. I feel like it works um, for my area that I'm planting in too because this part of the of the garden is fairly stays fairly wet so when you um, aren't burying them they're not getting like soaked and rotten uh, we'll see how this method uh, plays out when it's time to dig them up if it was as productive as if you would plant it traditionally and then that'll decide how I plant them next year but you always have to try uh, new things new ways of planting to see if they work better or worse and so that you know in the future which way you like best okay now here's a time lapse of me planting potatoes I just recorded, or I thought I recorded for three minutes and it wasn't recording. But I wanted to tell you, I got the rest of my row planted. Oh, I have about four feet left with nothing in it. And my beds are four feet wide, so that's 16 square feet. That'll work out perfect because um, this year I'm going to plant my sweet peppers and hot peppers separate because my kids love to come out and like freely eat in the garden and I would hate for them to get a hold of a hot pepper on accident. Um, I'm not hardly growing. I have probably three or four jalapeno plants and three or four, um, the other hot pepper I'm growing is Sugar Rush Peach because and it's really fruity, um, but it's spicy. And I plan on uh, using those for salsa and I usually make like a fermented hot sauce every year that literally only I eat because we don't like spicy things. I think this is where I leave you guys for the day. Um, thank you so much for watching. Until next time.